So I was going through my computer and deleting some files, trying to clear a little bit of space in the memory, when I came across this old video that I recorded back in March, like eight months ago. Uh, and then I, I guess I just kind of forgot about this video. And so now I wanted to upload it here and share it with you guys. But I find myself doing that thing where I have to record an awkward introduction to explain the video uh, because there have there's some things that have changed since the time I recorded this video and now. Uh, namely, the big one, the elephant in the room, is that Jordan, my friend, uh, that I talk about in the video, he, he died a few months ago. And um, I've mentioned that in one or two of our of the la the latest Stephen King videos, if if anybody's watching those. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to make you guys aware that you know this was this is an older video. This is this is from m several months before he passed away. Uh, and and yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. I had fun making it, and I did send the book to Jordan uh, along with some other things for his birthday in March. And, uh, and yeah. Oh, one other sort of warning is the audio is really bad. I don't know why. It was when I just n had barely gotten this mic and I think maybe I hadn't figured it out. Maybe I didn't have it plugged in all the way. Um, but the audio, you can hear like a crackling sound throughout the entire video. It's really annoying. I know if it drives you crazy, don't watch it. You don't have to watch it. Don't feel bad. It's, it's annoying. Um, and it, it, I don't know. I can't fix it. I don't want to re-record it. So enjoy if you can. If you know me, which basically none of you do, um, you'll know that I really love short stories. So I found this book, this collection of short stories called Flight or Fright, 17 Turbulent Tales, and it's edited by Stephen King and Bev Vincent. Um, I found this and it caught my attention because my buddy Jordan, who I do the uh, Stephen King read-along with, uh, Stephen King videos, he is a pilot. And so uh, I saw this and I was like, oh, this looks awesome. I could get this for him. But of course, before I send it to him, I want to read it. I wanted to read it myself. So I did. And uh, so I'll do a quick review here. I don't think Jordan watches my videos. <laughs> so I won't be spoiling this for him. But uh, yeah, before I mail this book to him, I wanted to do a quick review. So uh, hey, if you haven't watched any of our Stephen King videos, they're kind of terrible. Uh, <laughs> but they're fun for us to make. So, you know, if you like Stephen King, Feel free to go check those out. I'll put a card above me right here. Go check out the Stephen King uh, playlist. We've we've only done the first three Stephen King books. We, we've done Carrie, we've done Salem's Lot, and we're just about to finish up The Shining. We both finished reading The Shining already. We just haven't recorded the last part of that. Anyway, why am I talking about Stephen King stuff? I'm gonna talk about some short stories here. And uh, I've never reviewed a collection of short stories before. Um, I really love short stories. I read a lot of short stories, but I've never reviewed like a whole book of them. And uh, I'm not good at book reviews in general, so I don't know if I should like talk about every one of these or just go through the ones I liked or just the ones I didn't like. I'll just go rapid fire. We'll go quick. I'll try to I'll just try to like have a couple sentences about each one. How about that? First story, Cargo by E. Michael Lewis. I really liked this one. Um, except it was a little anticlimactic. It was very creepy, but then it kind of didn't go anywhere. Uh, but overall, pretty good. The Horror of the Heights by Arthur Conan Doyle. He's the guy who wrote Sherlock Holmes. I'm actually reading Sherlock Holmes with my wife right now. So it was kind of cool to see a different type of story from Arthur Conan Doyle. It was very fantastical, um, very much not based on like reality, but it was interesting. It was kind of fun uh, about a guy that flies way, way, way up in the sky and he meets some kind of like scary cloud monsters. Uh, kind of a cool story. Ooh, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet by Richard Matheson. He's the guy who wrote I Am Legend. This maybe was my favorite story in the whole, in the whole collection. Uh, anthology. This is an anthology, not a collection, sorry. Nightmare at 20,000 Feet. This was awesome. This is about a guy on a plane. He looks out the window and he sees like a gremlin troll creature thing and it's messing with the wing. It's the kind of plane that has a, like a motor, uh, not a motor, like a turbine, like an engine on each wing. And uh, the monster is like trying to, uh, trying to tamper with the, with the engine, trying to bring the plane down. And this guy is trying to convince the stewardess and people on the plane that there's a monster on the wing. But every time he calls someone over, it disappears. It like flies uh, away or whatever. This one really caught my attention because I was reading it and I was like, I've seen an episode of The Simpsons that was just like that. So I started Googling and I found out that 
This is the original, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, but apparently they made a Twilight Zone episode about it, and then they also included it in the Twilight Zone movie, and then recently I found out there was another one called Nightmare at 30,000 Feet, which is sort of, it's a completely different story, uh, but it's like uh, an homage to this story. And so, yeah, and then I guess The Simpsons kind of did a parody of it, of that old Twilight Zone episode. So this is the original, and it was freaking good. It was really creepy, really creepy and really fun. Okay, The Flying Machine by Ambrose, Pier Ambrose Beers, with a B, Beers. This one was really short. It was like literally a page long. Um, and it was funny and clever. I liked it. It was, it was good. Lucifer by E.C. Tubb. This one I felt like kind of dropped the ball. A really cool concept is about a, a personal time travel thing. This guy has a ring, and if you turn it, it makes you go, I think, what was it, 54 seconds into the path? Like about a minute. Like So you can like, um, he uses it to like, um, he'll say something in a conversation, and if it was the wrong thing, then he'll just rewind and he'll say a different thing. And so he, he like is constantly using this time machine to like be the perfect person. Um, and so he ends up on a plane and something goes wrong and, and it, was, it was okay, but I felt like there were some things that like didn't quite make sense and they weren't explained. So it was a good story, but it was kind of like, it kind of just felt like something was lacking, kind of left me um, scratching my head a little bit. The Fifth Category by Tom Biz Bizell. Bizell, I don't know. This was probably the coolest premise in the whole book. A dude is on a flight, falls asleep, he wakes up, and everyone on the plane is gone. Looks out the window, they're still flying. They're in the air, there's zero people on the whole plane, and the cockpit is locked. He can't get in, and, like he's just alone on a plane all, out of nowhere. And then uh, creepy things start happening. And he has like flashbacks or whatever is explaining where he was. He's like some sort of lawyer, I think. I'm trying to remember. But then the story just ends. And I was kind of pissed. I was like, this was such a cool start. And then it just dropped the ball. Like, I really, I was kind of, I was, I was mad about it. I was disappointed in that story. But great beginning. Two minutes, 45 seconds by Dan Simmons. That's the same guy, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. It's the same guy who wrote Hyperion. And honestly, I don't remember this story at all. I, I think, if I'm, if I'm remembering right, I think this is the one that had like a lot of, uh, the main character was like a mathematician, I think. And there's like a lot of internal dialogue in his brain where he's like calculating all this stuff. And two minutes, 45 seconds has something to do with like, that's how long it's going to take before they hit the ground because they're, they're crashing or something. I can't remember. Very uh, forgettable story, apparently. Sorry, if you love it, you know, no offense, but I, I don't even remember it. Diablitos by Cody Goodfellow. This one was pretty creepy, a little bit on the gross side, but not too gross. Um, it's a guy coming back to the United States, I think, from a foreign country, and he has something with him, and it has some sort of uh, infectious, scary demon creature. It starts infecting people on the plane. Pretty cool story. Um, Air Raid by John Varley. Apparently, this is like a really popular story. And they made a movie out of it and all this stuff. I thought it sucked. Like, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Air Raid was a bad story. I was confused the whole time. I was like, what's even happening? Um, kind of a cool premise. Uh, these people, they're like time travelers. It's because nothing was like explained. I didn't get like what was going on. But they're time travelers, I guess. And they like, or they're dimension travelers. I don't know. And they like go onto this plane and they get people off the plane before it crashes. But they take them to like a different time or a different dimension or something. I don't know. Uh, next, You Are Released by Joe Hill. Joe Hill is Stephen King's son. This was a great story. Um, I'm not sure which one I liked more, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet or You Are Released. Those are my two favorites from this, from this anthology. You Are Released was very realistic. Um, part of what I liked about it so much was that there's a lot of different characters and you get little snippets of everyone's viewpoints, but they're all very different people. Like, um, there's some people, I don't want to go into too much detail, this video is already getting on the long side. Uh, there's different people with like very different political ideas. And I, at the beginning I was like, oh, it's this kind of, like he's, he's critiquing, he's like, he's showing why this political stance is so stupid. Like, I don't like those kind of stories, you know, like leave your politics out of it kind of thing. That's my attitude. But then, he has another little snippet later on from the other guy's perspective 
showing how his politics are stupid. The, like the good and the bad of both sides. And I was like, oh wow, this is, I, I, it surprised me. I was like, oh, he's not, he doesn't just lean that way, he's showing both sides in actually a really uh, well done way. Um, and that's not all that happens, right? It's not all just politics stuff. There's a bunch of different characters. What happens is it's people on a flight and then there's a, something happens with, I think it's North Korea, and a nuclear war breaks out while these people are flying on a plane. So they can't land where they're going to land. They're going to go land somewhere else. But then, uh, actually, I won't spoil the ending, so I, that's all I'll say. But imagine that situation, right? You're stuck up in the air. You're kind of isolated. You can't call your family. You can't do this. You can't do that. The whole country is going to hell um, underneath you. What are you going to do? You're stuck on a plane with a bunch of strangers. It was a pretty cool story. Okay, let's hurry up. Warbirds. This was maybe my least favorite of the whole collection. I said that uh, Air Raid was confusing. I didn't know what was going on. Warbirds was truly deeply confusing. I really had no idea what was going on. It had to do with... Um, oh, I should mention it's by David J. Shao. Shao? Shao? Um, it has to do with World War I or World War II actual combat um, type situations, and it's all just confusing. The Flying Machine by Ray Bradbury um, has the same title as the other story earlier. The Flying Machine, this was another really short one, and uh, I liked it. It was good. Um, it, it was about like, uh, oh, I, yeah, yeah, it was clever because it takes place, I think, like in ancient China, and a guy invents a flying machine, and the emperor like destroys it and kills the guy because he says, like, if you... If this information gets out, then like it'll cause more problems than it's worth, kind of thing. Uh, Ray, Brad Ray Bradbury is a pretty cool author. Zombies on a Plane by Bev Vincent, which is one of the uh, editors of this of this anthology. Zombies on a Plane. Uh, this was good. I like this a lot. Um, it's a zombie situation, zombie apocalypse type thing. These people get uh, one guy is like, I can fly a plane. If you can get me to the plane, we I can fly us out of here. So they like steal a school bus and there's zombies chasing them, whatever. They get to the airport, they get on a plane, they're all piling on, they're trying to decide where are we even going to go kind of thing. They take off and stuff happens. Uh, I'm trying to be vague, I don't want to spoil any of these stories. They Shall Not Grow Old by Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl, one of my very favorite childhood authors, uh, from my childhood I mean. Uh, they Shall Not Grow Old, not a kid's story. Uh, very much inspired, as far as I could tell. By his actual time serving in the Royal Air Force in England, he was a fighter pilot. And a uh, pretty cool story about a guy, he flies out on a mission and never comes back. So they all, they're just like, oh, poor guy, he's dead. And then he comes back two, three days later, something like that. But he says he was only gone for like 45 minutes, or a couple hours, I think. Uh, some sort of weird time jump thing. Uh, and so, and then later he remembers what actually happened. And he tells them this whole thing that went down. And uh, it was a good story. It was a good story. Not a lot of action. Not, nothing really exciting, but interesting. Murder in the Air by Peter Tremaine. This was a great one. This is a closed room mystery. A guy goes into the bathroom on the plane, never comes out. They're knocking on the door. They're like, dude, you've been in there for like half an hour. Uh, finally, they, they just force the door open. They're like, sir, we're coming in. They open the door. The dude is dead on the toilet. Blood everywhere. He's been shot in the face. But the but the bathroom was locked from the inside. Uh, and there just so happens to be a, uh, like a doctor, a PhD of like criminology or something, like this detective guy on the plane. So he takes over the case to determine who killed this guy. And uh, it was good, it was kind of fun. The Turbulence Expert by Stephen King. I like this one. It was not uh, creepy, scary Stephen King. It was more just interesting Stephen King. Um, a person on a plane, so imagine, how, how can I even describe this one? I don't want to give it away or anything. It was a good story, I liked it. Um, imagine if there's like a organization, right, that they know which planes will crash before they even crash. They know which planes are gonna experience severe turbulence and it's gonna make them go down. And there's some sort of magic, it's never really explained, there's some sort of like, um, what's the word, like fantastical, magical, uh, supernatural, that's the word I was thinking of. Some sort of supernatural thing. <laughs> this is not making sense. They put a person on that plane, and because the, the specific type of person is on that plane, it guarantees that the plane will not go down. But there are, there are stipulations and details and stuff that I'm leaving out. It was a good story. I recommend you read it. Kind of a sad ending, a little bit. Um, yeah. 
Falling by James Dickey. This is actually a poem, a long a poem, several pages long. And apparently it's like a, it's a favorite poem of Stephen King's. I really didn't like it too much. It's based on a real event of a steward, a flight attendant that accidentally got sucked out of the door. Like, like the, the aircraft door itself was loose or something and she was like trying to fix it. And it opened and she got sucked out and fell. And um, it started out pretty interesting. And then it got like strangely sexual. Like she's falling through the air to her death and she takes off all her clothes. And it's just like, this is weird. Um, so I didn't like it all that much. I, I don't know. I, do, I just don't like poetry in general very much. Some poetry I do, but not a lot. Anyway, that's Flight or Fright. Um, I have no idea if this is like a good book review. I don't know. Um, do you read short stories? Let me know in the comments. Do you read short stories? Do you like them? I freaking love them. Um, are you interested in reading any of these things? You know, I will say when I first uh, found this book, it kind of made me, st I was like afraid to even read this book because I'm like, I don't fly very much, but sometimes I do. So if I read this, is this going to make me afraid to get it on an airplane? Uh, but it really didn't. Almost none of these stories have to do with an airplane actually having mechanical issues or crashing or going down or anything like that. Most of them were like, oh, there's a monster on the plane. Oh, there was a murder on the plane. Oh, uh, you know, there's a nuclear attack on the United States while we're in a plane. Uh, that kind of thing. So don't be afraid to read this if you're a nervous flyer. Really, almost nothing in this book is going gonna, is gonna to bother you, to be honest. I'm a little bit of a nervous flyer. Not that bad, but um, definitely nothing in here that bothered me, even a little. So there you have it. Pretty good collection. I'm excited to send it to my buddy Jordan. Um, I'll ask him to maybe film, uh, you know, maybe once he reads it, I'll ask him to do like a review or something and we could put it on the channel. Uh, or maybe just like r film him opening the box. I don't know. I'll ask him to, I'll ask him to give us an update if you got the book. Again, he's a pilot, so I thought he would appreciate this. I'm probably also going to send him a Michael Crichton book that I read called Airframe. Um, you can check out my Michael Crichton playlist or check out my review for Airframe right here above. Actually, I did a dual review. It was Airframe and Timeline. I'm just rambling now. I'm sorry. I'll get out of here. Toodaloo. I don't know why I said toodaloo like that. It was weird. One other little note I wanted to share is that um, I was able to go to Idaho to attend Jordan's funeral. And afterwards, I was able to visit his old apartment in Utah. And I got to sit down with his widow. And, and we hung out for a little while. We talked uh, about Jordan, obviously. And um, it was kind of, I felt bad asking, but I did. And she was very, very, very kind, very understanding, very obliging. And she let me have the book back. Um, it's a good book, first of all. And second of all, you know, every time I look at it, I think of Jordan. And so uh, I just, I really wanted to have it back. Uh, is that weird of me to ask for that back? Also, she gave me back Airframe. So I have this again. Um, and yeah, like I said, every time I look at these, I just think of Jordan. And so I will treasure them forever. Thanks for watching, you guys.